Okay, so my topic today is going to be about closing coronary fistulas, the experience from the land of the pharaohs. My name is Mail Said, and I'm a professor of cardiology at Ain Shams University. I come from Egypt, uh, land in uh, uh, the northeast uh, Africa, um, from Cairo, which is, um, I mean, we have a population of 110 million people, and Cairo alone uh, during the daytime has a 20 million um, inhabitants. So coronary fistulas present about 0.2 to 0.4% of congenital heart disease. There are sizable communications between a coronary artery bypassing the myocardial bed and entering either a chamber of the heart or any segment of the systemic or pulmonary circulation. They are the most common coronary artery anomalies that can uh, alter uh, coronary hemodynamic parameters. Small fistulas can be discovered instantly with cardiac imaging. Larger fistulas, and this is very common, can be diagnosed through evaluation of a continuous murmur in an other, uh, otherwise asymptomatic child. Larger fistulas tend to dilate over time with progressive increasing risk of thrombosis, endocarditis, or rupture, and clinical presentation can vary from asymptomatic to life-threatening heart failure. The symptoms are based, uh, like any other shunt, on the volume of the flow and the degree of coronary steel, and the indications and timing of uh, closure in childhood remain challenging, however, it is recommended uh, that it, it be closed in childhood due to the higher rates of complication with treatment after 20 years of age. Uh, the classification are very um, uh, complex. There is a variety of classification proposed. They can be based on etiology. They can be congenital or acquired. And uh, only a couple of weeks ago, I've seen my first um, uh, coronary fistula post-MI. Based on origin, commonly they come from the RCA and then from the LCA, LED more than the LCA complex, and they can also come from both the RCA and the LCA. Based on the segment of origin, and this is especially important when you're contemplating closure, so there is a type A, which originates from the proximal native vessel, then the rest of the um, uh, vessel is normal. And then psychic bar type B, which is originating from the distal native vessel and the entire vessel are di is dilated. And this is the one that is more uh, prone to rupture or thrombosis. Based on drainage, they can be either coronary cameral fistula draining into a cardiac chamber, commonly the RVRA or LV, but most common the right side, or coronary AV fistula opening into a um, uh, vessel like the pulmonary artery, coronary sinus, or any other uh, vessel in the heart. Based on the number of fistula strike, they can be single, multiple, they can be simple or complex, they can be isolated or in association with other congenital disease like PDA, VSD, or tautology of fellow. And then they can be small, medium, and large. And uh, this is uh, in relation to the originating vessel, large being twice as large as the originating vessel. Options of treatment is either transcatheter and surgical, and they both really have the same outcome. Uh, recurrence and recanalization rates are not very studied in both. Transcatheter closure is quite challenging because it's a heterogeneous morphology, and we usually use um, devices that are not um, specifically designed for uh, um, coronary fistulas. And a successive procedure depends on patient selection as in all um, other procedures and proper planning and equipment. Also, the anticoagulation is very important. And then last but not least, the ability to deal with complications and having a surgical backup. So patient selection starts first by echo. Usually they are suspected when you find uh, a dilated coronary artery like the right coronary here, the left coronary artery here dilated in echo. And then you can track the fistula strike and see the continuous flow. Multi-slice CT is a cornerstone in diagnosis. You can see the fistula, the origin, the termination, the point of termination. You can plan what are you going to put your devices exactly. The problem with multi-slice, only problem with multi-slice CT is that because children have a higher heart rate, uh, the visualization of the native vessels is sometimes difficult. This flow chart has been suggested by Haji Ital and published in the Journal of American College of Cardiology Intervention, uh, Cardiovascular Intervention in 2021. So the way to deal with it, if you have a coronary fistula, if it's symptomatic and large or it's a medium uh, sized fistula, and you have no other uh, indications for surgery or um, transcatheter is not is, is feasible, then you go for transcatheter closure. Otherwise you go for surgery. If they are simple or complex, then this uh, would um, tell how are you going to approach the fistula, either from the arterial side, venous side, or both. Our, our uh, technique is doing um, an AV loop in most of the cases. If you're unsuccessful in the first time and you have a reason for failure is identified, then otherwise consider surgery. Um, if, if you are successful, then re-image the patient at one to five years to assess for recanalization. Otherwise, uh, you reassess when the patient is again symptomatic or uh, if there is concern of potential early canalization. 
the procedure starts usually by initial angiogram where you do a uh, non-selective uh, angiogram in the aortic arch. You can see the vessel here. You have to know the vessel of origin right or left. Is it proximal or a distal uh, fistula? Also, is it uh, tortuous or straight, like um, these cases which are quite tortuous? Um, very important to know where is the proposed site of closure. So you just uh, do a selective angio. Uh, look, what our, our um, technique is just closing it as distal as possible at the point of uh, uh, exit. Uh, some investigators uh, would recommend closing it both proximal or distal. We prefer only to close it as distal as possible. And most importantly, uh, you have to visualize the native condy vessels so as not to occlude any of them and cause myocardial infarction. And sometimes it is difficult and you have to do a balloon occlusion test and then um, uh, inject again and look at, at the very small coronary arteries coming up here. Repair your toolbox with various um, catheters and various, um, uh, you have to have various uh, curves of catheters. You have to have a snare, various wires, the wires, uh, um, 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 PCI wires. And then we use a variety of uh, devices, oral off-label. My most common is the coils, the duct occluders, and the uh, vascular plugs, but we have used uh, as well DSD occluders and ASD occluders in our cases. Now, this is an example of a patient who had an RCA to LV fistula. Straightforward, this was closed by two coils, and the patient who did well. Symptoms really were very similar to aortic regurgitation and volume overload in the left ventricle. Another case where there is a CX to RA fistula closed successfully by a vascular plug. And you see here, we have to um, visualize the native coronary vessel and, and be sure that we are as far as possible from the, from the coronary vessel. Appreciate, please, but before closure and after closure, that now the vessel has closed, so no coronary steel anymore. And this is one of the problems with the coronary fistula. Another case who so had um, dilated both right and left coronary arteries with um, uh, continuous flow apparent in the right ventricle. She was seven years old, 32 kilograms. And her energy showed fissure from both the right and left coronary arteries communicating with each other and, and opening into the apex of the right ventricle with a, with a large aneurysm, as you can see here. We tried first to go from the left coronary artery, we were unsuccessful. We went from the Right coronary artery did an AV loop and finally could place some ADO 8 by 6, and this is the final result. Nowadays, we use TEE uh, when possible uh, to guide our procedures because uh, it helps us really in, in positioning the, the device. Another uh, interesting patient, a 20 year old female and late presenter, presented with shortness of breath and effort intolerance. Saturation was 92 at rest. She had a systolic murmur and early diastolic murmur. Uh, she had biventricular enlargement, a large PDA, dilated main pulmonary artery, RVSP of 90, and coronary fistula from LCX was suspected. We did um, a multi-size CT showing the large fistula into the CX and then a large PDA. We put her on pulmonary, uh, targeted pulmonary arterial hypertensive um, treatment and then did a hemodynamic study with oxygen. We found that the pulmonary artery, mean pulmonary artery pressure dropped, and she had a QPQS of 2.3 and a PBRI of 2 weeks unit. We took her to the cath lab, and this is her um, angiogram showing the fistula into the coronary sinus, and the opening was 2.5 millimeters. We used um, a 6x4 um, ADO1 after having a loop done and then re injecting and positioning the, the, the duct occluder in place. Uh, followed there, we did, dealt with the um, PDA, where we closed it with a 12 millimeter and with ASD occluder because it was quite a large PDA and hypertensive. Her follow-up showed in the 24 hours minimal residual flow, and at two months, uh, still a tiny residual flow, but a drop of the pulmonary artery pressure uh, to um, 36 millimeter mercury of RVSP from the TR, and she's doing really well. Been following her up now for the last five years. Uh, the procedure is not without complications. This is a patient of four years, seven months, 22 kilograms. He had a murmur discovered at the age of 25 days and diagnosed set at the age of two years as a coronary fistula CX to RA. He remained asymptomatic and then referred in uh, 2013 for diagnostic cardiac cath because they could not visualize the native coronary vessel. We did um, an injection and looked at the fistula, which is a large fistula CX, and the native coronary vessels was, were apparent here. We did injection. So he was asymptomatic, normal LB size and functions. Uh, we, we left him for follow up. A regular follow-up, there was gradual increase of the LB dimensions, so a transcatheter closure was planned. As you can see, this is his echo in 2014, 2016, dilated left ventricle aortic regurgitation, dilated aortic root, so we took him to the cath lab. 
And in the cath lab, we identified first the fistula tract as usual. We did our injection. We identified points where we wanted to close. We identified the native cornea vessels, as you can see here. And then we proceeded to closure. Once we've um, started placing the device, we've noticed the uh, IC segment elevation in the inferior leads. And the echo showed segmental wall motion abnormalities, uh, which gradually normalized. And as you can see, there was kind of stagnation of dye and starting thrombosis here that is extending to the cornea artery. So the decision was um, what next? Treat the device, go to surgery. Some of our colleagues, because the, the ECG normalized that leave the device, but then he's a very young child with inferior infarction. We don't know anything about thrombus propagation. We started pulling the device, which we could not because there was quite an angle between the device and the delivery system. Also, there was a kink on the delivery system here. We finally managed to pull it back. The ECG normalized. Post closure echo, uh, left ventricular functions were normal, no segmental wall motion abnormalities. However, um, the device was trapped into the tricuspid valve, causing some sort of tricuspid stenosis with a mean pressure gradient of five millimeter, but the patient is still asymptomatic and we're following up so far. Uh, also, as much as CT showed good results. So, uh, what about the post closure sequelae? And this is a study that was published in 2021, a retrospective review of 48 infants from 20 centers with a 2.9 years medium follow up. They found that infants and uh, with hemodynamic significant coronary fistula can be treated by transcatheter or surgical closure with excellent procedure success. But patients with distal coronary fistulas are at higher risk of suboptimal remodeling with uh, post-closure anticoagulation and follow-up coronary anatomic evaluation are warranted. Uh, that's what we do in our patients. We give them anti, um, some of them, we, the smaller fistula, we give them only antiplatelets, but larger distal fistulas, we give them anticoagulations and monitoring uh, with their INR monitored. So a take-home message is um, coronary fistulas have androgenous morphology. If asymptomatic, just follow them up. Uh, Transcatheter closure is feasible and a good alternative to surgery. Individual planning for every patient with careful patient selection is mandatory, and good delineation of coronary anatomy is essential in procedural success and to avoid complications. However, the long term sequelae are not well studied. Thank you very much, and I'd like to enjoy uh, to invite you all to attend our um, uh, yearly congress, which is Cardio Egypt on 20 to 23rd of February 2023. And uh, thank you from the land of the pharaohs. Thank you very much for inviting me.